Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back, or welcome to another Bangs Audio Review. Well, here we are. Um, it's SimGot uh, EA500 time. This has been uh, this has been an interesting couple of days. We'll put it that way. Uh, the first um, impression I had, and I did post a short on it, of the LM was ouch, bright. Uh, then I let my ears adjust, my brain adjust to it for uh, a little while, and I realized that I'm not so bright. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, I don't know, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Um, but they're not as bright as I thought they were, um, which was a relief, honestly. And I think part of it had to do with that I was coming from, like, really smooth natural planar land which sounds counterintuitive but these days planar sound like dynamics dynamic dy dynamics sound like planars hybrid sound like yeah you know either or, or both um it's you know it it's uh it's an interesting landscape to say the least but anyway so um i backed the truck up uh gave myself some time to adjust and then um, obviously, I haven't reviewed the uh, the OG EA500 either, so I figured this would be an apt uh, opportunity to do them both um, because they are different and uh, same but different, different but same kind of thing. I did my best to put them on equal footing. Um, you will see the Dunu buckets are on both. If you could see that. Uh, they're the SNS tips. Somebody called them buckets, and I swear I'll, I'll find out who it was and give them credit. But I, I love it. I think it's great because they kind of do just look like buckets. Um, and it's a fun, fun thing to say. Do new buckets. So they had the same tips on them. They had the same wire, more or less. I, I'm not sure where the stock cable for the EA500 is at this point. It's probably down lost in the drawer there. I do believe it was very similar to the one that comes with the LM. Um, they are terminated in 3.5. I thought that was important uh, to keep similar as well. And I'm sure that the quality of the cable is pretty similar. This is the actual cable for uh, my buddy, the ULIM by Continuum. I was hoping to find the use for that at some point, and now I have. And now I have a 4.4 cable that's free, which is, which is fun. Um, anyway, on to the review. We'll do a quick unbox. There's nothing left in this box. Uh, I'm assuming that it came with the same sort of setup. Uh, what came in the LM box was basically the case, the cable, and one kind of one set of tips uh, normal or regular bore silicone in uh, white and and they are fine there's nothing great or nothing bad about these tips in fact if you want to in the size of course that fits you um, you can use them I, I prefer to uh, well and I'll tell you why in this case because there was a really good reason um, that I've got the SNS tips on on there the buckets uh, anyway, we don't need to look at those. Those are whatever. Uh, just, you know, just a note here. And I, I feel like it's kind of doesn't need to be said, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, the tips can make or break the IEM. And in, in fact, for me, in this case, they did make or break the IEM because I literally was about to pack up the LM and send it back. And, you know, that was right at first, at first blush, first go. I was like, you know, I don't really need these in my life. I don't think that they're great. I think that they're a little harsh and a little bright. And I already have the regular EA500. This is just kind of redundant. Um, it's not. So otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this review. I would have just done a short and said, I sent them back because I didn't like them. Um, they've definitely grown on me over the past couple of days and I, that's probably a combination of um, brain burn in uh, tip rolling and um, just get, giving them like the full spectrum of music to go through and not just limiting them to like uh, Tool and Mastodon because that's what I start everything out on because I figure if they can handle metal they can handle most things because metal is intense it's busy 
it has a lot of symbol strikes and if something is too bright or uh, too sibilant you're going to notice it in metal first just basically because of that then you get into the whole female vocals thing and you know all of that as well um, so like I said I backed the truck up I slowed slowed down what do you mean lost huh well it's still recording it said my camera connection was lost that doesn't matter there's an SD card in there um, so anywho uh, it's important I think um, also and that, that was the, the tip rolling tip um, is to make sure that you have some different tips on hand I would recommend having the Duno SNS tips. I would recommend having the um, oh uh, the Divinus Velvet tips. Um, both of those are wider bore, um, and I think that definitely helped with these. Uh, also, definitely have Zeosis Render tips on hand because they sound good on just about everything. Um, and I kept calling them Symphonium, and I'm really sorry, but I will link them in the description. They're the Symbio, uh, Symbio hy hybrid tips, which are very close to the render tips, but they run a little bit larger. The other thing that I'm coming to terms with is the fact that my left ear canal is slightly larger than my right. So ideally, I need to, with the, the buckets, I should have a large in the right and an extra large in the left to get that absolute perfect seal. I don't have any extra larges, but I'm going to fix that. I'm going to order some. Um, they also run small because most of the tips that I use are in medium size. Um, sometimes I will sub a large in the left uh, to to get that to get that seal a little bit better, um, which is, it's a pain in the ass. Honestly, I didn't really realize it, um, but. No, it depends on the tip for me. If if it's the silicone foam hybrid, I don't have to worry. They just fit. Like Zeos's tips just fit. Um, so anyway, just a little bit. You know, tips are super important. The seal is super important. I think the material of the tip is super important. Um, I have gone away from straight foams because I do feel like it deadens the treble too much. And if you have a set that needs foams to sound good, then the set has too much trouble my opinion um you know differs from person to person so anyway um i really ended up liking these a lot i, I ended up liking the lm enough to keep it um because it's different enough from the ea 500 and yeah, it's a long past time for me uh to return these and i i don't think i would return them anyway because i feel like the two sets are different enough um, that I can justify keeping both but I will say this um, there is no need to have both so if you don't own the EA500 the OG then there's no need to buy that just buy the LM why? well I'll tell you why um, and I'll show you a graph as to why too uh, the LM is the grown-up version of the EA500. I get these boxes out of the way so we can look at some graphs. Uh, where the hell can I put them? I'm running out of room here, guys. There's too many IEM boxes out. I'm probably going to have to fix that at some point. Uh, Graph-wise, and the Kato's on there too, and there's a reason for that. The EA500 classic setup, which I believe is the silver nozzle red uh, gasket, and the EA500 LM are up here. Uh, and even though OG500's red, LM green, um, even though you can see more treble energy and extension on the LM, that's a good thing, trust me. Because the way that they present uh, is that the EA500 Classic, or the OG Classic, with the Classic Tip, this guy is harsh. For whatever reason, even though it scoops out above 3K, 2K, 3K, and then comes back up a little bit, the, pres the presentation here is not a smooth presentation at all. It, it's kind of bitey. 
and it's not my favorite. Um, it's good. I mean, you're going to get some detail retrieval out of it, obviously. It's just that the 500LM does it better, longer, stronger, and smoother. That's the big difference between the two. Well, that and you can see that the base, and I like base, so, you know, the base is it's a solid, you know, 1.5 uh, dBs higher, looks like to me anyway, um, on the LM. So the LM, you would think that's, well, okay, it's going to make it more V-shaped, but it doesn't really make it V-shaped. It still has good presence um, and, and good energy in the mids. It's weird doing a dual review, um, but that's what we're doing. I, I'm just trying to give you guys my reasoning behind picking the LM over the OG EA500. Um, because it does what the EA500 does, but it just does it better. And that's simping, but that's the best way to put it. It just sounds better overall. It is a more mature sound, it is a more polished sound, it is a more dynamic sound. It is a better sounding IEM. There you go. So that's that's my analysis between those two. Now, I was going to put in a couple of different IEMs as comps here, and I apologize for the person who asked me to comp the NX7 Mark IV. Um, I can't do it, I tried to. It's just too different, um, and it is not as cohesive as any of these sets. I, I love the NX7 Mark IV because I think it's a really fun set. I think it's a different sound. It's not a Harman um, clone. It's It's got some different energy. It's got some different stuff going on to it. it, it but it doesn't compare to these very well. And that, that doesn't mean better or worse. It just it's not a good comp. Um, so I, I think the NX7 Mark IV, if I do a comp video with that involved, it's going to be involved with the Nova, with the, you know, the Chopin, the Quintet, um, other hybrid IEMs that make sense to compare it with. It does not make sense to compare it with the single DD IEMs that these are. And that includes, and I'll bust it out now, the, the Moondrop Kato was my ringer because the Moondrop Kato has been my sort of comfort food IEM since I started. It was the first IEM I spent some decent money on at 190 and um, continues to be something that I'll go back to if I just want to listen to good, smooth, solid performance. You know, like that. that's... The Kato is always going to be one of my favorites. But the thing is, is that it's not as good. <laughs> it's not as good as the LM. Um, it doesn't have the dynamics or the detail retrieval or really just the overall polish of the LM, um, which is the other reason I was like, damn, when I put these in and AB'd them with the LM, I was like, and I was thinking about sending the LM back. That's nuts. Um, it just does it smoother, you know? It does it better and smoother than the Kato does. And I, I would take the Kato over the OG 500 for sure. So there's your there's your ranking order, if I get these guys all in. So um, single VD, right? Uh, I'm going with the LM first because it ended up being a lot better than I expected it to be. Um, and I do like it better than the Kato and I do like it a lot better than the OG 500, EA 500. So. There you go. One, two, three. Um, and that's, I'm not including any of my other IMs in this. I'm just doing these three single dynamic drivers and how I feel about them as a trio. And, and on the graph, you can see that pretty well that the Kato lands sort of in the middle of the two. Um, it is a little bit better, uh, more extended in the treble than the OG500 and does present that more smoothly but not as with much energy and detail as the LM does. I'm starting to get confused myself, but anyway, so yeah. It's um, a graph is a graph. That's how they graph. It does make sense to me in the order which that I like them, but that is the order in which they kind of graph, you know? Um, so anyway, enough graphs. The, uh, 
the moral of the story is for me don't condemn any IEM that you get I mean unless it's just total shit uh, and you'll know that and you know that happened to me with the um, C Audio C Audio you may ultra sorry to keep piling on it but for months I tried to make that sound good and I couldn't and the reason is it just was it was just a shitty IEM to start with it was two hundred and thirty dollar um, not a very well made IEM there was nothing I could do to fix it I burned it in for like a hundred hours I don't know if you're a believer in burn in or break in or not but um, you know if you're talking about really small drivers it's probably gonna make if any difference very little um, but anyway, you know, if you believe in it, that's fine too. I, I think I kind of do, but only for dynamic drivers because I just feel like they have the greatest, like, you know, ex excursion of, of any of them. Um, and BAs don't have any excursion. So, you know, there's like no way to really burn those in. Um, yeah. So the moral of the story, getting back to that, is that when you get an IM and it doesn't sound quite right to you give it some time spend some time with it listen to a lot of different kinds of music with it and and see what happens now you know if it's a bad i am you're going to know because nothing's going to nothing's going to get better for you it's not going to sound right no matter what you do but if it's a good i am and you're just getting used to it like is what happened with me and the lm give it some time the other thing is that i found out is that sometimes you got to fight fire with fire and this is this was counterintuitive to me but now it makes more sense. So I hope this will help somebody else too. Um, when I was getting used to, quote unquote, getting used to the LM, I did everything I could to choke the treble. So that means that I put hybrid tips on them. And I even tried foams on them. And it just made it sound worse and worse and worse. And finally, I realized... I'm trying to make these do what they weren't designed to do. Embrace the freaking treble, dude, and see what happens. So that's what I did. I started with um, Spiral Dots from JVC, and I would recommend those as well um, if you want, you know, a wide bore, um, a wide bore uh, a tip to 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 play with. Um, that sounded a little bit. Well, actually, it sounded much better than the hybrid tips I was using. And then uh, I put these on, and it was like, okay. I was like, now I got it. Let them be what they're supposed to be. Give them that room to breathe. Give them, give them the air, and they're going to give it back to you. And that all of a sudden, everything just snapped into place. It was literally like a key turning a lock. Because not only did it open them up, and allow them to perform, you know, allow that treble to really breathe and, and be smooth and nice and detailed. It also allowed the bass to breathe. It also allowed the mids to breathe. It just allowed the whole thing to open up and sound as wonderful as what I've been hearing people say about this. So that was eye-opening to me. Um, I stopped using EQ a, a while ago. I, I used it, I think we all do when we first get in, for a while. And then I realized I was just trying to make everything sound the same. And there is no fun in that, A. And B, the, not all IEMs or headphones are supposed to sound the same. They're supposed to have different signatures. <laughs> you know, that's the fun, is that things sound different from one another. So I stopped using EQ. And I just started letting things be what they were. But I still did have a tendency to try to cut treble down a little bit in the sets. And so, you know, using foams for a while and realizing that wasn't doing me any favors. I still will use hybrids for sure because sometimes I just get a better seal with them. Sometimes the IAMs just sound better with the hybrids on them. But um, it's important, I think, to roll uh, as much as you can to find out what tips are actually going to work best with the IMs that you have. It makes a world of difference. It does. And I, if I'm talking to anybody out there who's a seasoned veteran in this, you, you know what I'm talking about. 
um, and you think maybe it's obvious, but it's not obvious because when you buy an IEM and it comes with tips and sometimes it comes with like three different kinds and like, you know, small, medium, large of three different kinds of IEMs and then plus a set of foams, you're like, well, then what's in here should make these sound the best. It's, it doesn't always work that way. So again, I'll reiterate, you know, having the Dunu SS tips, having the buckets, um, having, you know, something like spiral dots or something like the Divinus Velvet, um, having some of Zeos's render tips, having them on hand so that you can roll is really, really, really important. You don't know until you try, right? And sometimes it just makes everything better. In this case, it made everything better on the LM, which has now become my sa my favorite single DD uh, IM that I've got, even over the Kato and definitely over the uh, OG EA500. Still has a place. I think I think this will have a place in my you know history, um, being that it was uh, a really good IM when it was released, and I got kind of mad that it was replaced so quickly with the LM but now I understand why they did it and um, I will again reiterate there's no need to have both just by the LM because it's the grown up better version of the EA500 and if you have the EA500 you can be happy with that I don't, I'm not saying you gotta go out and buy the LM except I kind of am because it's that much better um, and that much different, but I think it's kind of tough. I think it's kind of tough if you have one and you have a limited budget and you know, it's like, ugh. this one I think is worth the upgrade. Um, others, maybe not so much like Aria to Aria to moon drop Starfield to Starfield too. I, I think everybody kind of agreed. Well, more or less agreed that it wasn't a necessary upgrade. I feel like the LM is a necessary upgrade over the EA500. I do. And I do think that um, the LM is definitely another nail in the coffin for the Kato. Sorry, buddy. You think about it this way, you can buy an LM and a nice HCK F1 Pro and get a Planar and a DD that are both better than the Kato for the same price as the Kato. Oh, it hurts to say that, but it's true. You're beautiful, and I will always listen to you, no matter what. I won't let you gather dust, I promise. Um, that's it. This turned out to be a little bit more of a comp video than a review video. I apologize for that, not getting into the crazy details on the LM. Just trust me that it's a really, really good IEM, and you will like it if you buy it. Um, and that the EA500 has been rendered uh, obsolete along with the Moondrop Kato at this point, by the LM. By the LM. <laughs> it's kind of like, duh, sorry. It just, I didn't mean to say it like that, but it just kind of happened. So yeah, by the LM. The LM's the, the best of the three. And may, I'm not saying it will, it may sneak into my top five. I don't know. I don't know what it's gonna kick out at this point. I don't think there's anything for it to kick out. I don't think it's better than the T10. I don't think it's better than the um, F1 Pro. I don't think it's better than the Chopin. I don't think it's better than the Quintet. And I don't think it's better than the Ulim, although that's close. If there were one that it might knock out, it might be the Ulim by Continuum, but I'm still holding on to that for right now. I'll do an AB at some point, report back. That's about it for this one, uh, folks. I, I appreciate everybody. Um, I wanted to say just a special thank you to my subscribers because we made it over 250. I didn't think that would ever happen, but it did. Um, so I'm at 252 subscribers as of this morning and uh, it just, it warms my heart. It means that I'm reaching some folks that, that people like the content and, um, and it gives me motivation to, to keep going. Um, so I will, so I will, and I'll tease you on the next one. The RDR1 is sitting over there. That's going to be the next review, a triple dynamic driver IEM from one of my new favorite uh, IEM companies, Artie. We'll see how that goes. For now, 
Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, love y'all. Nothing but peace to you. See ya.